Sukkot 5784. We've reached the moment that we've all been waiting for, entering our Sukkot, going into Ananea Kavo, the cloud of Hashem, preparing us for Bezrat Hashem, the great winter to come with great winds, great snows, great rain, cold, Bezrat Hashem. And Sukkot comes, there's so many things that we can get involved in. But we're doing the Sukkot Shir on a treadmill to resemble exactly the idea of Sukkot. That the idea of Sukkot is Semedirat Keva Belech Shev Bedirat Aray. It's about moving. It's like the story of Avram Avinu Lech Lecha. It's about walking. It's about entering the physical. It's about sitting in a sukkah that above you is schach, which is the ground. Beneath you is the ground. So you're mikvah in physicality. And so how can we give a shear of Torah if not on a treadmill? So Bajat Hashem, hopefully some of it will be clear. This year we want to focus on a world war between two very special characters. Character number one, the Lulav. Character number two, the Etrog. And it might seem that these guys are, you know, nice to each other, but really there's a great competition going on between them. Who's the rebel? Who's the one that's gonna walk out with us into the winter, lead us, guide us, and give us guidance? How do we deal with the outside world? How do we deal with physicality? And it's very interesting, the order of the Mishnayot. It might be a little bit complicated, I'll try to go a little bit slower. In the third parak in Masechet Sukkah, the first Mishnah deals with the Lulav. The second Mishnah deals with the Hadas. Third Mishnah deals with the Arava. Very organized. Similar languages, you can look inside. Fourth Mishnah stops, has this conversation, how many meaning do we have to have? Is it three, two, one, one, like we do? Or is it one, 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 that they're all one? Very interesting machloket. Fifth Mishnah deals with the actual. Obvious question, what's this fourth Mishnah doing in between the first three and the fifth? It was very, very organized, there's four meaning. So you could do one, two, three, four. What suddenly do you stick this thing in the middle? But how many do we have? And I think this middle Mishnah is creating a machitza that's creating a very intense and difficult conversation between the Lulav on one side and the Etrog on the other. The Lulav stands on one side of the fourth Mishnah together with its friends, the Hadas and the Arava, and the Etrog stands alone by himself. And when we think about this separation, to understand the depth of it, I would compare it to the difference between the two great lights of the world, the sun and the moon. We know in Parak Aleph when it creates this, the, it's the beginning of Shnei Morot Gdolim, the big lights, and then the, the, the moon says to Hashem, you know, how could there be two big lights? Come smaller. And the Pasuk says that Tamao Gadol, the Memshelet Hayom, controls the day, but Tamao Katan, so they compare the sun and the moon, and now one is big and one is small. One is complete, one is perfect, one is incomplete, imperfect. But there's another difference, that when the sun shines, there are no stars. It's the source of light. It's so perfect. It's so great that it has no room for any other characters. Whereas... The other light, the moon, it adds two words, ve'et akochavim, and the stars. Because of the way that the, the moon perceives itself, that it isn't the center, that it's small, it's smaller, it knows how to receive, it knows how to be quieter, it knows how to make space, it knows how to make room, therefore it has friends called the kochavim. On a very similar level, we can see the etrog and the lulav. The Etrog is that perfect Yom Kippur Jew. The one that is totally cleansed, everything's great, smells like the Etrog, tastes like the Etrog, and walks around with this great chip on his shoulder. I can save the world. I'm bigger, greater, smarter than every other Jew that's ever been in history. We say that the Etrog stand alone. Whereas the Lulav, it's not perfect. It doesn't have it all. Because of that, it has room and space for all of its friends, the Hadassim and the Aravot. And I would even say especially 
the Aravot. That it has space, it has room for the Arava, for the one that has nothing. But because the, the Lulav presents itself in a way that it's imperfect, anyone that has any brokenness to him can come into the Eged, can join the group, can enter into the mitzvah. And that's why the Gemara asks, who do we make the bracha on? Is it on this etrog world, this perfect world, this Yom Kippur example of the angelic lifestyle? Or do we make the bracha on the lulav, the one that makes room, that makes space, that has an ability to create awareness between the different parts, the different types, the different you know, lights, we make the bracha on the lulav. Saying to us a very important message, walking into the sukkah is an experience of inclusion, including the generations from before in the Sheva Uspizi, including the outside world, including the physical into the spiritual, including all of the people that are outside into our home. And the only one that will give this great example is the lulav. And when we're walking now, we leave our homes to realize, yes, it's important to know that there is perfect, but never to use it when we're in the outside interacting with others. For ourselves, yes, there's an angelic peace that we found on Yom Kippur, it's so beautiful. But now that we're walking outside to Gan Eden, to the trees, we have to remember that there's something called a tzadat, that there is an opinion that it was an etro tree. That's where we sin, when we think we're better. And there's a tzachayim, that the tree itself is the mitzvah. And the lulav is the tree itself. It's the, it's the growth of a tree, it's a tzachayim. And a tzachayim has so much room for all the different parts. In the times that we're dealing with in Eretz Yisrael, that there's a lot of questions, who is inside the Eged and who's outside the Eged, to listen deeply to the bracha and the lulav, and to remember al netilat lulav, I'm taking the one that has room for the other minim, for the other chavre, that is how to interact with the outside.